Hi, look at what a little bit of bleach can do for your cards. If you want to do kind of an over-the-top card in a well-ventilated area, of course, and you've got a little bleach, we're going to look at three different ways to use it today. It's Karen from Stamping on the Back Porch. I've gathered my supplies. I put some bleach in a cup here. I have everything protected. And then I've taken paper towels and made several folds so I have an ink pad and I poured this over. I don't want to use any more bleach. There's already some on here. So the first way we're going to do this is direct to paper. I'm using the Celebrate Sunflowers. Love this gorgeous set. And I'm going to just use that as a stamp pad and ink up my paper. I'm sure how... The thing that's really cool about this technique is that every color of cardstock you use, you're going to get all different looks. So they keep changing. Okay, so this is the first one. And when it dries, I'll just show you what I did with that. If you notice, this is the cinnam cider cinnamon uh, new brown color. And when it bleaches like this, and then it's totally dry, it really looks like a mix of very vanilla and Rococo rose. So I added the Rococo Rose ribbon and some very vanilla and a sentiment from that stamp set. All of the supplies, there will be a link below with all of the supplies if you want to see details of what I used. But I thought these colors just look really pretty together. And doesn't that make a fun background? Okay, so the next way of making, well, there's actually two ways. This is just using an aqua painter. I'm just keeping one of these that had gotten a little frayed, one of the larger ones that doesn't work so well. And I will mark it that it's for bleach. An old blender pen works well too. I can find, I do have one set aside that's just for bleach, but it's so far set aside because I probably use bleach once a year, but I just got the time to do it. And it's a gorgeous day to have everything open so I can do this and be done. But can you see, I just scribbled right across there to make a background. Now, another way to make a background is to use an ink block, or I mean a stamp block. So I'm just going to use these and stamp it right in my pad and put that on my paper. I'm going to hold it for a little while. I don't know if you can see in there, but you can kind of see how it starts absorbing in and working. It just makes beautiful tones. And I'll take this off for now and set that aside. So the card I'm going to finish I did a larger block and then I trimmed around it and I actually stamped the block on it twice. But again, we're getting this really pretty colors in this cardstock. So I chose just to keep working with this color. And then to finish this up as a card, I am going to layer this. Oh, I'll just use this at the moment here. I'm going to layer this on some metallic paper. which is just stunning. And you know, of course, if you want to save your metallic paper and not use all, I could have either punched a big thing out of here or cut something out because you don't see all that, but you know, we're in a hurry today. It's just a little time-saving trick there. I mean, paper-saving trick. <laughs> have to be the right one. Okay, so this is the background on my card. So then what I took next was, and this is the third way of coloring in, of, of doing this. I used my blender pen after this was embossed. So now we're going to add this onto the card. I wanted to add a little more of this pinkish color. You see, I started adding there because I thought it just seemed a little too stark to me because I really loved how it brings out that Rococo Rose look. So then I took Rococo Rose and a blender pen. I'm just going to take that, and if I don't want a lot, I just put some on there. And I'm just kind of working from the inside out here. And of course, I don't have an ink pad here. Watch this. I'll use my hand, okay? If I want to just blend it out a little more, make it a little soft. Here, I'll pull this out because I do want it a little softer than that. Things don't always go as you envision them when you're on live, but it's all okay. It's... Uh, Kind of the, the fun of just experimenting, and that's kind of how we learn. So if it's darker than I wanted, then the next time I'll just go lighter. <laughs> and you can also see, I think when it dries, it does lighten. 
but I thought this was just fun for bringing in some of this color but still leaving which also just shows once you've done the bleaching you can also color over it like this uh, okay I think that part will will dry oh now see I speak and it arrives my fabulous assistant just brought me a paper towel to, to rub that in but look how pretty this is going to be attached down there with adding those colors so I think that's just really a fun look so to get this we just started with embossing first so this is just embossed on the cider cinnamon and then I have my bleach just a little bit in the bottom not too much so it won't spill and I'm just going to paint just painting inside and the cool look about this technique if I really cared about not getting in any lines I would use this and it would be slow and tedious and that would be a fine look I don't care if a little bit goes out it's just kind of the look of bleach so that part is all fine but I'm just going to go all the way around I'll just do a couple more so you can see it really goes quite quickly when you get started here and to see how it's very very pink at first and then when it dries it will end up being much more of a vanilla but it still has shades of that kind of rococo rose pink in there you can kind of start seeing it start to dry there with a with where it's a little white so again I can show that in a minute but I wanted to show that um, as I mentioned different colors oh so here's here's one I did on the on the moonlight mist paper you see that's almost like a gray really a blue gray and this is quite a bit of a yellowish but to get a real yellow look what crumb cake does this is not colored in yellow I thought this is so there's really this yellow base to the crumb cake doesn't that make just a beautiful sunflower so I just particularly love the look of that but I thought this is all fun so you can experiment with this on all kinds of paper and you're gonna get all kinds of different looks so thanks for watching and if you want to see more ideas for sunflowers just click on the video right here